Hey everybody, it's Lot and Sybin. We're taking a look today at the Amazon Smart Air Quality Monitor. This is a device that just runs continuously and it measures five different data points about the quality of the air in your home. And then of course it reports back to an app or to an Amazon Echo device. And we're gonna be taking a closer look at this and what it's all about in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this air quality monitor is all about. Now the price point on this at the time I'm recording this video is $69. There's not much to the hardware. It is just a simple device that plugs in over USB. This is a micro USB connector. They give you a five watt power adapter in the box to use it with, but really any USB power source will power this device. It has a small fan on board that you'll hear running and that is necessary because it needs to get airflow over its sensor to detect what is going on. There is also a light here on the top and this will give you a visual indicator as to the quality of the air in your home. And right now we're in the green, which means that my air is good, good enough to breathe. Um, but if we were having some air quality issues, it would change color to, to yellow or to red uh, to indicate that there might be a problem. And of course, on the app, you get a lot more data than what uh, you see here. Now, the setup process on this is very easy. You do need an iPhone or an Android phone and the Amazon Alexa app to get started. And what you do is just get this near your phone and it will be automatically detected and added into the rest of your Amazon uh, smart home devices, a very simple setup process. It does take a little bit of time for it to calibrate itself. So you're not gonna get data back immediately. I would say probably within the first 10 minutes or so of plugging it in is when you'll first get your uh, set of data. But it does need a couple of days to acclimate itself to the environment where you're placing it. So you will have a notice on the app that it is still calibrating. Uh, you'll hear the fan kick on pretty heavily when you first plug it in, but it generally keeps itself at a barely audible level most of the time. And I've been running this in my bedroom for the last three or four days, and I don't even know it's there at this point unless I put my ear up to it to listen to it. Now, as I mentioned, you do need the Amazon A Word running on your phone to get this to work. And what we're gonna do is pop into uh, the air quality option on our device list to see what we get. Now you can see our air quality score right now is 94, which it says is good. And this score is the aggregate of all of the data that it collects into a single number. And as we'll explore these uh, different data points, you can see how it puts it all together. So we're gonna start here with temperature. Uh, right now in this room, because I've got computers and lights on, it's 75 degrees where I sit at the moment and it'll give you an, an indicator over time here as to what the temperature trends were in the room in which it is placed. And I can look at that hourly or by the day. Uh, so you do get a sense as, whether, as to whether or not your thermostats are working properly, for example. And on each of these data points, you can tap on the Learn More button, and it will give you an indicator as to what it considers an ideal range for that data point, along with tips on how to get to the better data point if you're having issues in your home. And of course, this will matter more when we look at some of the other data points that it measures. The next one is humidity. And as you can see in my room right now, it's pretty dry. It's 24. So it's on the low side of good. And you want to get that number a little bit higher. But too high results in mold and other bad things happening in your home. So they want you to stay within that uh, green zone there. I'm in the Northeast United States. My heat is on at this time of the year. So it gets very dry in the house. So we have to work on this a little bit in my home. And of course, I can click on this to get some more tips on, on humidity levels and how to monitor and improve them. One of the things that I, again, like about this is that you're not just given data, you're given data and an explanation as to what all of it means. Uh, the next one is particulate matter. And this will measure particulates in the air between 0.3 and 2.5 microns. Note though, there's no filter on this that can be replaced. I don't know what happens if it's in a very dusty environment and it gets clogged up, um, but I would imagine most homes should not have high levels of particulate matter uh, that would result in the thing getting clogged. So if you are planning to use this in a warehouse or a work area with you know, wood dust or something, this is probably not going to be good for that, but for a home, I think it'll be fine. 
And again, we can measure the matter it is measuring and also uh, get some details as to what it's looking for and how to improve things. Uh, the next one is carbon monoxide. Now, this is not a carbon monoxide alarm. It will not notify you if carbon monoxide levels get too high. They didn't rate it for that. So this is not something to replace your carbon monoxide alarm with, but I do think it's useful because if you have a garage where you've got cars that start in the morning or something, or you have a generator outside, you'll get a good indicator as to whether or not you've got carbon monoxide leaking into the home. So that I think is why it's useful, even though it won't trigger an alarm. And of course you can learn more about carbon monoxide and how dangerous, dangerous it is uh, within that section there. The next one I found to be the most interesting, which is the volatile organic compounds. Now the issue here, kind of like the particulate matter, is that you don't know exactly uh, what the compounds are that it's detecting, just that it is finding them. And these can be just about anything. So it could be something as bad as paint fumes or gasoline fumes or something, but it's also stuff as benign as uh, candles that are burning nearby, like a scented candle or something. So it picks up kind of fumes in the air, uh, vapors that may or may not have an odor. And what's neat about this thing is just how quickly it supplies data. So what I just did is I put some isopropyl alcohol onto this paper towel, and I'm going to put it next to the sensor here. And within a couple of seconds, we will actually get real-time data coming back that this thing is picking up a volatile organic compound, which is the fumes coming from this paper towel. And you can see that number went from one to eight, and it's gonna pick up even more uh, when it gets to its next uh, data read point here. And that's how quickly this data gets pushed back to uh, the app. It's pretty much in real time. This data is stored on Amazon servers, um, so you do have to have it uh, connected to your Wi-Fi. So those are the five data points that it collects. And again, you're not going to get a lot of granular data as to exactly what in each of those categories it's detecting, especially in the case of the volatile organic compounds or their particulates. But it's not good to have that stuff in the air no matter what. Um, so you can at least try to figure out the source of those things and mitigate them. Now, there is a way to have it trigger some things uh, through one of the routines. And I'm recording this video very early on in the life cycle of this product. And right now, it's very limited as to what it can tell you about when you're not looking at the app. So I did set up a routine here based on temperature. And what this would do is have a notification pushed to my Echo device to tell me that it's too hot when the temperature exceeds 89 degrees. But unfortunately, we cannot trigger any kind of notifications off of any of the other data points. And that would be something I would love to have them add to the product. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be that hard to do. So I'm hoping in the future, you can do notifications based on this aggregate air quality number, or maybe one of the other components of what it measures. But right now, the only thing you can use to trigger anything is temperature. Now, additionally, you cannot at the moment export any data out of this either. I would have really liked to have been able to pull this data into a spreadsheet so I could integrate it with my other IoT devices. That is not possible right now, uh, but hopefully they will add some functionality in the future as well. Uh, even if it requires an intermediary like IFTTT or Zapier. Now this does integrate with Amazon Echo devices and I could ask it a simple question like this. Computer, what's my indoor air quality? The indoor air quality is good with an air quality score of 95. So you can see here it gave me kind of my overview of all my different data points on the screen. If I had a Fire TV, this would of course be on the larger screen. And then I can tap into this here and get uh, some of those charts that we saw on the app earlier. I do think it's easier to interact with the app versus the Echo, but you can get things out of it. And you can also ask for a specific data point. So for example, I could ask it, computer, what's the current carbon monoxide indoor air level? The indoor carbon monoxide level is good at two parts per million. So you can get an audible readout of each of the data points provided uh, you ask it correctly. And overall, I was very impressed with the amount of data that this provides. It's more than just temperature and humidity. Uh, you do get a good idea of 
what your air quality is looking like and what you can start doing to try to mitigate things that might be impacting it. So if you have allergies or you have issues related to your indoor humidity, for example, this might be really useful to try to figure out how to make things a little bit better and maybe even improve your health. I do hope that they add some ways to get more out of this data, especially uh, data point driven alerts and that sort of thing. And of course, the ability to export. And I think all of that is fixable uh, with software updates down the road. So if I see a significant update on this, I will do a follow up. Uh, but overall, I think it's a nice product that it can actually give you a lot of useful information about what is going on in the air within your home. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.